The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Well, West Coast has it by a six. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Three of them are right together with one for long to go. Let's Go Racing is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Welcome to Let's Go Racing. I'm Danny Gibson here with my co-host Dick Girardi, and we have all the top horse racing and news from around the country. On today's show, we head to Monmouth Park for the Grade 3 Salvatore Mile, $150,000 purse, featuring New York Traffic, who will face Pirates Punch, to who will defend last year's title. He won the race last year, but anything can happen, as we know in horse <laughs> racing. Both Mandaloon and Brooklyn Strong make their first start since the Kentucky Derby in the TVG Pegasus Stakes, $150,000 running at Monmouth Park. Mandaloon a heavy favorite over the small field at the New Jersey Shore. And of course, our favorite chubby girl, PA bred <laughs> Chub Wagon, tries to remain undefeated, which would be seven for seven for this amazing filly if she can take the Shine Again Stakes at Pimlico, which is part of the match series. All that on today's show. You no know, triple crown racing, nah. but the horse racing excitement has not stopped. We got enough action, and Parks horses will be rather prominent in the show today, even in races not at Parks, Danny. I like that. Well, let's get to some Parks racing. Our local race of the week was Monday's seventh race, a starter optional claiming race going seven and a half furlongs uh, with the purse $25,000. <laughs> Two in for the claiming tag. There's a field of nine, and our post time favor is going to be number six, Passport, with jockey Jeremy LaPree who's quite the turf rider. Indeed, he is quite the turf rider. And this is interesting that this horse was favored off the most recent race, pretty solid third in a similar kind of company. We'll see how she does. And our second choice is Zealin' It, the number seven horse for trainer Mike Pino, with Ruben Silvera, our leading rider, riding. Yeah, but Ruben Silvera, he has blown open the jockey race. And uh, I said pass, but we'll see how he does. We'll see how they all do. I have to say Zealin' It looked absolutely stunning in the paddock, a beautiful son of war dancer but let's get to Chris Griffin with the call of the local race of the week. Zealand it with a head in front of Drakesboro Wildcat. They're still one, two. I say I play is back in the mix is in third. Stonegate moving forward. There comes Passport in the fifth position is three off the lead. Losing ground tis Valentino Days now seven off the leaders. Stuck up Johnny Wishbone and Judicial Restraint. Five of them bunch up into that far turn, zealing it down towards the inside, but here's the move from Stonegate with a quarter mile left to go. Passport is also circling rivals. I say I play is looking for room. Here's Passport down the center of the course, Stonegate back to second. I say I play is coming after this leader as well. Passport found the lead, it's Passport in front. Passport, Stonegate, I say I play gets a bit closer. Here comes I say I play to the outside of Passport who's got a battle on back. Passport, I say I play, I say I play with a head in front passport comes right back and it's a photo well i say i play at 19 to 1 with jonathan acasio who gets his first win <laughs> as a journeyman jocko jockey for trainer jorge diaz they made it through he got checked stopped but he got it up in the final finish yeah this was kind of an amazing race this was put on because th three wide on the first turn was kind of battling for the lead then drops back as you said danny on the far turn there's just nowhere to go has to drop back again then the favorite gets first run on him, and here comes I say I play again to get up by a nose. This horse was way the best in this race, but boy, if you bet him at 19 to 1, you had to be sweating right until the photo came up. Absolutely. Passport ran a bang up second, and actually the first three horses all had blue silks on, so I didn't know where my eyes were going. I was out on the turf That's course. That's why you trust Chris Griffin. That's what he's there for. Good but he luck called to the him. photo. I'm yeah, sure it was a close did. one for sure. <laughs> but it's time for us to head to our first break. When we come back, we're going to have national coverage. Something exciting is going to happen at the Jersey Shore, and we'll see if Chubb Wagon can remain undefeated. All this on Let's Go Racing. Hello, beautiful, the two-length lead, Chubb Wagon second. If you want action and you want it now, you got to get the new Parks Racing mobile app. Wager and watch thoroughbred and harness racing from around the world. With the Parks Racing mobile app, it's easy to open and fund your account. Then, place your wagers and cheer on your horse as they thunder down the stretch. With the Parks Racing mobile app, you'll easily make withdrawal requests, view the previous day's replays and results. Plus, open any new account now, and you'll be automatically enrolled in the Parks Rewards program. The more you wager, the more you earn. Get the new Parks Racing mobile app and get in on the action. 
Did you know the Pennsylvania horse racing industry provides health care and pensions for thousands of workers who in turn spend their income supporting local communities? And we do it with zero tax dollars while creating tens of thousands of jobs. Looking to join the thrill and excitement of thoroughbred racehorse ownership? Pewter Stable can get you started. With more than 25 years of experience under the leadership of Greg and Kate DeMassey, Pewter Stable is one of the industry's leaders in racing partnerships, winning hundreds of races and millions of dollars at racetracks all over the mid-Atlantic, including New York. No markup, no management fees, makes our partnerships unique and affordable. We are Pewter Stable. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Well, there's not many female jockeys riding here at Parks these days, but we do have one now. We're very excited about it. Courtney Gallardo recently uh, moved her tack here from Penn National. She's a seven pound apprentice rider, and we were able to catch up with her and hear all about her exciting journey becoming a jockey. We're with our new apprentice jockey, Courtney Gallardo. Courtney, it's welcome to Parks, first of all. What's it, what's it been like? And first of all, I, would th I think everybody wants to know make someone want to become a jockey in the first place uh well i was lucky enough to be grew up in the sport my father was a jockey for 30 years up at suffolk and uh that's what really got me into it we have such a great community that came down here from massachusetts you started riding races at penn national tell us what the the move to penn national and, and your first experience riding there was like uh it was great you know i was there for many years and uh, a lot of the trainers helped me out and you know they got me started and uh it's been really good but i just wanted to come here and get a new experience see new people i have to ask you you know everybody every jockey's first win is a memorable experience you'll even hear jockeys years later they remember the horse they rode T tell us about your first win <laughs> it was actually came by surprise like a lot of people will say um it was actually from a trainer here miguel penaloza he shipped a horse his name was high flying guy and I knew nothing about the horse, nothing, and uh, we just broke, and then he ended up winning, and it was it was really exciting. I was it was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> we love high flying guy. He's run a lot of races here. <laughs> what were some of the antics afterwards? Did you get dumped on? Did you get powder thrown on you? Oh yeah, the same. All the traditions like powder, water. It was really cold that day, but the jockeys were nice enough to. Some of them were nice enough to give me warm water. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been so awesome getting to see you ride here. Um, we haven't had a female jockey ride here in a while, so it's thrilling. We love our girl power. Who are some of the girl jocks that have kind of helped you along the way? Um, well, you know, I started at Penn, so uh, Brittany Scampton and Kayla Albright, they were in the docks with me, and Jackie Davis. They all have helped me out so much. So without them, I, you know, they, they got me going. We look forward to a lot of wins here with you and getting to know you, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much. Well, I know her and her jockey agent, Jared Hutt, are working really hard. She always has that amazing smile on her face, so good luck to you, Courtney. Let's head to our national coverage brought to you by the Chapman Auto Group. If their emblem's not on the back of your car or truck, well, unfortunately, you did pay too much. <laughs> And let's start our national coverage at the Jersey Shore. Monmouth Park had the Salvatore Mile Grade 3, a uh, $150,000 purse. And our heavy favorite is New York Traffic, Safi Joseph, with some Parks Connections as owners. Yeah, definitely Parks Connections here. John Finelli, uh, Chuck Sackney, Glenn Bennett, th that crew. And this horse ran in the Derby last year. I mean, this is a really good three-year-old. Yes. Just missed winning the Haskell. And then had a lot of time off and came back with a gigantic organic race off the layoff, 103 buyer, a deserving odds on favorite here. Big, beautiful gray. I know they're hoping a lot from him. And our second choice is West Will Power, 9-2 to two for trainer Kelly Breen, who's always done very well at Monmouth Park with Nick Juarez. Yeah, Kelly Breen is the man at Monmouth Park. He won the title last year. He's off to a great start again this year. Well, let's get to the call of the Salvatore Mile with Chris Griffin as the announcer. Green light go to the back stretch, and green light goes. Got a head in front of New York traffic, who's tracking right there with this leader there, one, two. Taking off the pace there is West Will Power. Also, Basin is now in fourth, only about a length and a half off the lead. Pirates Punch is trying to save some ground up the back stretches in fifth. Now three off the lead. Val Harbor follows that rival, tipped off the rail, Galerio. War Stopper is a touch wide. Croatian is tailed off to the back of the field with informative less than a half mile to go. They went 47-1 and one. for that half-mile time. They get set to work into the far turn. Green light go, and New York traffic. West Will Power is in behind this battling duo is looking for room. 
Basin is called upon with a four wide rally. Pirates punch has got to go from there with Galerio out wide. New York traffic has taken the lead. New York traffic with a quarter mile left to go. Green light go is back to second. West Will Power is looking for him. Tips to the outside. Bow Harbor is trying to run on. Pirates punch has got to do more. New York traffic but has plenty of company to the outside. West Will Power informative. It's come from far, far out of it. Informative trying to pull off a shocker. Informative down to the inside of New York traffic informative has taken the lead informative is going to blow up the board in the salvatore mile while well, informative comes storming home <laughs> with jockey jose ferrer it's 79 to 1 uh, paid 161 dollars and 60 cents for the win for trainer uriah st louis who's based here at park and honestly, as much as everyone's shocked, I wasn't that shocked because he ran a huge race on Preakness Day, uh, just getting second. All of those horses came out and did phenomenally. Yeah, no question. And to your point, Danny, the second and seventh horses came back to win out of that race. Informative, excuse me, the third horse also came back to win. So three winners out of that race. It was a 90 buyer. It was a career top. He did it again, 98 buyer. I'm sure the New York traffic people thought they had the race won, but Uriah is the king of the long shots. Uh, it's been three years now, but discreet lover at 40 to 1 in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, at Venice here in the Greenwood Cup at 50 to 1. I mean, when he's in and he's bombs away, look out, he did it again. I feel like New York traffic has a little bit of second-itis, too. He's, he's got a lot of close seconds. He just kind of gets lost, it looks like, in the last eighth. Again, yeah. he, no whips. Paco was trying to hand-ride him home, but informative. He didn't need the whip. He nah, was just look, storming. It, informative was really good. He never won a race on a fast dirt track. He was 0 for 19. But to Danny's point, the last race said something had clicked. I don't know why it would click after 24 career <laughs> races, but it did. And this horse was great. And I don't think there was anything fluky about it other than the price that you and I wish that we might have been Absolutely. involved. Unfortunately, we were not. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, here's more from trainer Uriah St. Louis on this exciting win. We're here with trainer Uriah St. Louis in front of informative stall who's enjoying his alfalfa after his spectacular win at 79 to 1 in the grade 3 Salvador Mile in Mammoth Park with Jockey Jose Ferrer. This really wasn't a fluke because I was at Preakness Day and I saw him run that amazing second place finish. Unfortunately, I'm very upset I didn't bet on, but tell us about that. Well, every horse that came out of that race came back and won. You know, Jamie Ness finished third to us. He came back and won a two other than at Delaware. And other horses came out of that race and won. So we know it was a key race. And all we did was, <laughs> I know our horse is coming. All we did was get him ready. And we got a great jockey. We got a leading jockey at the track to ride him. And just told him to put him in a good position and make one run with him and see what happened, man. So there it was. <laughs> he won. Absolutely. It was a thrilling finish, and uh, yeah, <laughs> he wants a piece of me. But, uh, yeah, informative looks more than bright today, and we're really thrilled. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's stay at Mammoth Park for more excitement. We're going to check out the TVG Pegasus Stakes, a mile and a 16th. It's a $150,000 purse, and our Mandaloon, which is our unofficial Kentucky Derby winner, <laughs> right. is a heavy, heavy favorite at 1-5. to five. Jockey Florent Giroux comes in for trainer Brad Cox. Right, he's still officially the second-place winner. They haven't changed the result yet. That didn't mean I had a hearing down in Kentucky, but most people expect eventually, and, and eventually could be years, Mandaloon will be the 2021 official Kentucky Derby winner, and obviously on paper lays over this field. Second choice is Wayburn. He draws the four posts for trainer Jimmy Jerkins, and Dylan Davis comes and rides him for the first time. Right, one to Gotham impressively at, does this sound familiar, 46 to 1. Was Uriah training him then? I don't think so. <laughs> now you wanted 46 to 1 for Jimmy Jerkins. Jimmy said this is a horse that you have to become friends with. Well, let's see if Dylan mm -hmm. Davis became friends enough with Wayburn. Here's the call of the Pegasus Stakes. 24 and 3 for a very easy opening quarter mile for Lugamo, who's got a neck in front. Wayburn's tracking in second, Dr. Jack in third. Brooklyn Strong has reclaimed fourth. Mandaloon is the trailer, but now within two and a half of the lead as they've got less than a half mile to go. 48 and 3 for the half mile time, and here comes Wayburn to kick on. Wayburn is up by a half length, now a full length. Lugamo's back to second, Dr. Jack. Mandaloon is called upon. has got to make up two and a half lengths coming after the leader, Wayburn. Brooklyn Strong at the back of the field, well into the far turn. Wayburn's got the lead. Dr. Jack and now asks for the entire effort as Mandaloon to the outside. 
Weyburn at the top of the stretch. Mandaloon is now picking up strides, and here comes Mandaloon roaring down the center of the racetrack. Mandaloon is now up by a full length. Dr. Jack down to the inside in between them. Weyburn, Mandaloon is kicking on. Dr. Jack not going away. Weyburn is fighting back. Mandaloon, Weyburn. Here comes a resilient Weyburn to Mandaloon. Mandaloon, Weyburn, Mandaloon. Well, Mandaloon does what favorites do, and they win, although <laughs> I'm sure that was not the race that Brad Cox expected or Florent Drew broke slow, was yep. dead last, and it was kind of a stop and start trip. Yeah, it was strange. You didn't expect him to be back there. I mean, he was fast enough to be right up near the pace of the Derby, uh, Danny, and then he was, but he overcame it. But then he looks like he's going to win easy, right? And then all of a sudden, uh, here comes Weber. And you just said to me off air, and I think it's a good point. I think Florence Drew needed to stick there. The horse just looked like too. he needed to be encouraged. And of course, no whips at Monmouth at this meet. So. Very strange, but he did win at 93. He'll come back in the Haskell, and then Brad Cox has said all things going well. The next race after the Haskell will be right here in the PA Derby. So there's a chance, in quotation marks, we could have the Derby winner here on September 25th for the PA Derby. And Brooklyn Strong was just no good. I mean, he just he basically beat an East horse. He showed no speed. He was way back. Uh, this is just not the same horse we watched as a two-year-old. Definitely didn't progress to three. Nope. Uh, but Mandaloon, uh, I think class carried him there. And uh, yeah, he was. The, but I think Wayburn's going to have a big season. I'm excited for Jimmy yeah, Durkin. Wayburn did run really well in addition to everything else that happened. But yeah, I mean, you figure Mandaloon's going to win easy. Didn't win easy. No. But I think the best two horses uh, were first, no second, doubt. and third. Yep. Well, time for Chubwagon. Yay. She runs Our down girl. at Pimlico again, <laughs> who she loves that track. It, in the Shine Again Stakes, it's $100,000 at six furlongs. This is part of the match <laughs> series, so extra money does get awarded to winner and uh, different people that have done well in the match series. We could talk about that more later, but Chubwagon draws the one hole, one to two for trainer Lupe Preciado, and Joe Martorez does make the trip down to Baltimore. Right, so I read Ortiz wrote her on Preakness Day in the skip hat uh, when she was really good. First she was off the pace. She won anyway. Remember, she was entering the Benner Roses uh, Belmont uh, weekend scratch because of the sloppy track. Back in here, one to two, overwhelming favorite, but a pretty good field in here with Hello Beautiful, who's certainly a solid horse, four, seven or 14 lifetime. Like we just talked about our second choice, Hello Beautiful, and that's the husband and wife team trainer, yep. Brittany Russell, oh, with Jockey Sheldon Russell. And look, forget the Barbara Fritz, she just didn't have it that day, but all of her other races are really competitive, and obviously, uh, we know Chubwagon likes Pimlico, Hello Beautiful has typically been stabled at Laurel, but at the moment, nobody's stabled at Laurel. They're all at Pemlico. Well, let's see what happens in the Shine Again Stakes. Hello Beautiful as Chub Wagons asks for early speed for the inside and don't let Sweet fool you on the outside of that pair in third position. Never enough time in Paisley singing her next. And to the back of the pack, a unique factor and Anna's Bandit and Luker last now some 20 lengths off the pace. Hello Beautiful guns out to the lead now. Over from Chub Wagon leads about a length and a quarter and don't let Sweet fool you is in the clear. Another three. Never enough time is next and Paisley singing in mid flight. The unique factor Anna's Bandit has eight lengths to come now and Luker trailing the field 22.21 a sparkling opening quarter mile here at Pimlico for Hello Beautiful Hello Beautiful the two length lead Chub Wagon second don't let sweet fool you never enough time and Paisley singing on the far outside Anna's Bennett takes the inside home quarter to go at Pimlico half mile in 45.32 and here comes Chub Wagon on the outside to Hello Beautiful Hello Beautiful's hanging on to the lead though Hello Beautiful bracing with the challenger Chub Wagon on the outside can Chub Wagon get by Chub Wagon, Hello Beautiful. Chub Wagon's taking the lead. Chub Wagon runs the score up to seven in a row. Seven undefeated and seven starts. Chub Wagon from Hello Beautiful. Chub Wagon is undefeated. <laughs> seven wins out of seven starts, which is an amazing feat. Congratulations to Lupe Preciado and Wendy Preciado. They're there every day with her. And what a horse for George Chestnut and Danny Lopez. No question. Uh, seven for seven is just hard to do. I look. Danny, I mean, we can go back to the history of this racetrack. We know Smarty Jones had a better winning streak, but of all the horses that are in the stable there, it can't be many that started off a career seven for seven. So had to earn it. Uh, had she to come did. off the pace again. Hello Beautiful is a really tough horse. 92 buyers. Now the question is, what's next? Remember Lupe had said July 3rd, Princess Rooney at Gulfstream, winning you're in. I still think he's thinking about that, but all of a sudden she's having a lot of races, and now you got to find a way to get to Florida with no planes uh, so I don't know what's happening there but invites are already out for the Princess Rooney obviously uh, Chubb Wagon got an invite CC grade one winner uh, we're talking Kamari grade one winner 
Frank's Rockette. I don't know who's coming, but it's going to easily be the best field she'd ever face. But you know what? She's earned it. If, if Lupe thinks she's ready, it'd be fun to see her in Florida at Gulfstream on the third. It sure will. It'll be exciting to see what they map out for the rest of Chubwagon's year. Hopefully she can remain undefeated. Yep. But it's time to head to our next break. When we come back, we're going to have our jockey and trainer of the week. And one of our young jockeys is going to have a very good week here. All this on Let's Go Racing. Turning for Home is a nonprofit that has provided nearly 2,800 former racehorses with a safe retirement. The program was created through the foresight of the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. We all love animals, and to give back to something that helps us so much, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. Responding to the need for a better system that addressed the uncertain future for the retiring equine population at Parks Racing, the PTHA rallied horsemen to support the program. These horses can do anything from hunter jump to Western to therapeutic riding. Turning for Home became the first on-track retirement program at our year-round racetrack. We want to make sure that our horses that have run so well for us over the years get the great opportunity to get a new vocation. Out of everything that we've done in Pennsylvania for racing, I think that's the thing we can be most proud of. If you would like to help these amazing animals find a great second career and forever home, please give us a call or contact us at turningforhome.org. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Our Jockey and Trainer of the Week is brought to you by Turning for Home, our proud racehorse retirement program that we've been here at Parks for over 12 years now. And we have another great Turning for Home success story. Ertz, <laughs> who's not named after a football player, Zach Ertz for the Eagles, but his wife, Julie Ertz, who's a famous soccer player, was trained by John Service, known by Mainline Racing Stables. And she was retired just after one race. She did hurt her knee. And uh, the, she went to Maui Meadow Farm, and the track program did an absolutely fabulous job rehabbing her. And uh, she's now with her new adopter, Seva. And they're on their way to the Thoroughbred Makeover, the Retired Race nice. Horse Program at Lexington, Kentucky, this 2021. And we absolutely Absolutely look forward to these two lovely ladies and they have a bright future ahead. I know Danielle Montgomery's been a regular at the Third Red Makeovers down at Lexington. She has we talk to her every year when she goes down there. It's really a good time and Sounds it's not like only it. just celebrating these horses after, they celebrate what they did on the track sure. and I love that, that it's a joint community. It's very cool. Well let's get into our Jockey of the Week. Our Jockey of the Week is Louis Hernandez. He gets his first win here <laughs> ever at Parks Racing. He's a seven pound apprentice rider. He was riding in Puerto Rico at Camarano and Mountaineer. He teamed up with jockey agent Joe Hampshire, Ooh. who is Michael Sanchez's uh, agent, and uh, we've seen what they've done together. Jockey and, agent uh, to the stars he right really there. Is. He's the guy to be with. And he molds these riders just as young men, too. Yep. He helps them with all aspects of their life. Absolutely. So we, I look to see a lot from this young rider. He was so excited yesterday. <laughs> and also our trainer of the week is Uriah St. Louis. Of 79 to 1, Uriah. When Uriah wins, we all win. Yeah, that's, that is a <laughs> fact, and I hope somebody around here bet on him because the guy is amazing. If you just bet $2 on all of them in these snakes races, you will win one. How easy is that? Just the <laughs> Parks Connections exact. I'm, I'm still mad at myself about that. <laughs> well, it's time for some race recap brought to you by the Pewter Stable. <laughs> Check them out at pewterstable.com. A great way to become an owner today and get a part of that great <laughs> partnership. And let's start at Santa Anita with the grade three affirmed a mile and 16th. Yeah, this is the, the chosen Vron. I think we're going to say this to yeah. three horse who's coming from way back in the pack at eight to five. It's going to run by the, the field. And again, a short field was last early field of five. And class here, the seven to five favorite for uh, Baffert and Pratt just sort of runs evenly third, third, third. And uh, Chosen Vron ends up winning by a length and a quarter at the wire under my man Umberto Rispoli. Yeah, he can certainly horse back. And this is the third stakes win for this horse. So congratulations to him and trainer Eric Krulljack. And uh, they have a nice horse on their hands. Indeed they do. Well, let's head down to Pimlico. They had the Stormy Blues, $100,000 by furlongs. It did come off the turf. And uh, all hell broke loose when the gate wire, but boy, what we had a really exciting finish there. Yeah, it did come off the turf, as you said, Danny. So 5 eighths on the main and street loot, the 11 to 10 favorite for Jerry Robb, who's been with, with the X-Man, Xavier Perez, been a combo down there for years, is going to get up right at the finish at 11 to 1. 
This is now this horse's seventh stake score, so obviously a really game filly. See, see, see her in the Maryland Million somewhere, I would have to think. I would think so. And definitely coming off the turf really moved her up. She yep. loves the dirt. Well, let's stick at Pimlico, the Prince George's County. And uh, I'm, I was very excited. It was a mile and a half on the, this, this race did stay on the turf and pixelate with the ground saving trip. Yeah, pixelate with a really good ride. You don't see Joe Bravo at Pimlico all that often, but Joe's going to give the Michael Stidham trained uh, horse a really nice ride. It's going to get up here by a length. And here's an interesting sidelight for Joey Spatch. I head to California. Uh, NewJersey.com just had a named their 99 best athletes in New Jersey history. Jersey Joe came in number 49. That's pretty exciting. Jersey Joe now going to be California Joe. <laughs> yes. I love those city zips. And I just want to give it a shout out to the third place horse, Eons. Uh, that horse came all the way from last to third yep. with jockey Michael Sanchez. Huge I think that horse run. for Arnold Delacour is going to yep. make a big move going forward. No doubt. Well, it's time for Ion Racing. And uh, today's racing has lots of great races to watch and wager on. It's Royal Ascot time. Mm -hmm. So in jolly old England, there's all the top turf races and hopefully a queen sighting. Yes, the queen is, shows up every every day and they just bet on what kind of, what color her dress will be. There right. we go. Do you have an opinion on that, Danny? I think it's gonna today? be blush. All right, fair there enough. we go, right. we'll have to look out for that. <laughs> and Belmont Park has two New York Stallion series. Um, Santa Anita has the grade three San Juan Capistrano stakes on the turf. And it's really nice to see Woodbine finally back. Canada was kind of one of the, the last countries in this, in this hemisphere to open back up horse racing. Absolutely. Well, it's time to head to our next break. When we get back, news and notes. We have some exciting news for <laughs> one single ticket holder in this area. We'll see you back on Let's Go Racing. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Welcome back to Let's Go Racing. Our news and notes is brought to you by the Granny Fund. The Granny Fund bringing continuing education right here to our wonderful backstretch community, helping with books, scholarships, anything needed uh, to get more education. And some very exciting news right here at Parks. <laughs> our big Philly Five had our first single ticket holder winner, and they won over $325,000. Right, for the people that haven't followed, it's the last five races on every card, and it carries over unless a single ticket winner and we had a single ticket winner last Monday. They certainly did, and uh, big shout out to them. I think a lot of more people are going to be paying attention to our big Philly Five now. And in jockey news, Gerard Melanson got his 5,000th win down at Evangeline Downs recently. He welcomes uh, a very short colony of men, a 37th rider to do so. Yeah, it's hard to get to 5,000. Tony Black's in that company, but yeah, it's hard to get there. You almost have to win like two races a month for a decade, and that is hard to do, and especially down in Louisiana where the field sizes are huge. Yeah, no doubt, but yeah, congratulations, Gerard. Also, it seems like every week now we're having some kind of sad news. Uh, Bob Bork passed away for the people that have been around this track forever. Bob was here basically for 20 years or so, controller, and then ran the track, ran Garden State Park, a really good man, very innovative, passed away in Houston last week at the age of 83. Thoughts to his family at this time, and that wraps it up for Dick and I. Come check us out right here at Parks Racing. We do have live racing Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Post time is 12.55. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next week on Let's Go Racing.